Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues of Cell. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. So Frank Miller did his own year one for Superman. Yeah. And now we're going to talk about it. <laughs> this is Superman year one Ooh. from Frank Miller and John Romita Jr. Oh. Oh. This is from the DC Black Label line. Right. Okay. This was one of the first titles they announced when they unveiled Black Label. Okay. okay. This is one of the original. Conceit of yeah. the line was. Okay. And you can tell... It's weird, actually, because a lot of the Black Label books are this kind of like oversized new format. Mm -hmm. Batman Damned had it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did Frank Miller always want to write Superman Year One, or was it it was yeah. it more like DC was like, we need you to write something for I mean, the new Black Label. Could you come up with something, please? <laughs> the reality is, you know, because of the origins of Dark Knight Three, the Master Race, and how like there's some controversy about whether or not Frank Miller actually worked at all on that book. <laughs> Though his name is on it, uh -huh. uh, alongside Brian Azzarello's. Uh, though, if you read the trades, Miller has said practically none of it is him outside of the stuff that he drew right. in like the backups for that series. Right. And, of course, Batman The Dark Knight Last Crusade, which was also drawn by John Romita Jr., but supposedly written by Miller. And I believe that. Mm. And I think we all are pretty much on board for that being written by Miller. Mm-hmm. If you read this, there is no doubt in my mind that Brian Azzarello wrote Dark Knight 3 The Master Race. Because mm, oh. this is totally different. Completely different, but wholly consistent with everything we know Frank Miller to be. Ah. Now, as for whether or not he wanted to do this, in his interviews he said that the portrayal of Superman in Dark Knight and other, like All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, uh, and other such works... Mm -hmm. He says those are stories told from Batman's perspective. Okay. So Superman does look like a dullard, and he is a toolbox. Mm. But that's because it's Batman's story, and we're seeing it through his lens. I disagree. Uh. But now that he's older and wants to tell a Superman story, he's within his right to change his mind right. and say that his mind was always changed. And as I understand it, he has said he's always wanted to tackle Superman. Okay. Like, on his own and tell his own Superman story and say like, yo, this is my perspective on Superman. So that was Superman in a Batman story. He was a supporting character. He was in service to the Batman story. Mm -hmm. But now we're going to look at Superman from Frank Miller's perspective and it's going to be a little more complimentary. Okay. Or at least that was the conceit. Okay. I think it is. That was the idea. Yeah. yeah. And it is. And like, you think it is. And you think it is. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, it's definitely, he's... <sighs> he's not like a fascist asshole. No, he's not. <laughs> Oddly enough, no significant delays Apart from the delays in it being released initially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when it came out, it came out pretty, yeah. pretty consistently. Okay. Um, right away, I'm noticing uh, some muted colors. Yes. Well, you got to thank uh, probably Alex and Claire for that one. Um, this whole thing was put together by Miller, Ramita Jr., Alex Sinclair, and Danny Meeky. Um, no Klaus Janssen. Oh. And no Lynn Varley. So it's going to be more traditional looking. Okay. Okay. That being said, it is still Ramita Jr. in the, you know. Did he do the cover? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, he, he did this cover. So I have the Frank Miller variant yep. for issue two. Yep. And the Frank Miller variant for issue three. All right. Yep. And they're their own thing, That's, yep. baby. That's clearly Frank there Miller. something up with this anatomy. Yeah. There will be something up with that anatomy. I was anatomy looking at, like, the, until the last musculature page. and stuff, and I was like, oh, no. Take note, for a lot of things, most prominently for me is the size and fluctuation thereof of the chest crest. <laughs> mm, okay. Where it will be the size of his chest, or the size of a fist, or whatever Ramita Jr. wanted to draw it like. Okay. All right, okay. It's just, you know what it is? Like, don't worry too much about it. <laughs> okay. All right. So. so I think in all transparency, we should let them know. I read this one. You did read this for one. For Off the Rack. So okay. if you go back, you've seen that I've read that one. Right. But whatever. That's where it ended. Well, and I didn't read the rest of it. I remember reading this first chapter and being like, wow, it's still going. Yeah. Because it feels like it's at least two complete stories in one chapter. Oh, okay. It does look fairly long. It is. Yeah, yeah. So remember, this is Frank Miller's portrayal of Superman's origins. It's year mm -hmm. one. Right. It's his year one. Drop any comparison to Batman year one entirely okay the narration the art the tone the story structure 
throw all of your understanding of Frank Miller's year one concept out the window. He's just trading on the fact that you know his name is synonymous with year one. Right. And he's doing an origin for Superman like everyone does. Right. Right. So. Right. Away we go. What else would he call <laughs> Would you say his up, Superman up and away? Up, up and story. away we go. Uh, so the story opens with the destruction of Krypton, as we've seen probably a thousand <laughs> times yep. in Okay, wait, whoa, books. slow down. Yeah, Krypton. It's a faraway planet that <laughs> Superman's <laughs> from. Uh, it's, it's blowing the hell up. Well, why is it blowing up? We don't really get into why. I can promise you that Rogelzar has nothing to do with it. <laughs> it starts out with your Frank Miller basic narration, you know. The air seems to boil, lightning flashes, thunder roars, a planet-wide storm, there's no rain, no relief. Like, okay, short burst sentences, positively Hemingway in. Right, but who loves this city and does the city take care of anyone? Right. It's almost like an also Superman when Morrison says, like, you know, doomed planet, kindly couple, last hope. You know, like, we yeah. get it. Yeah, like, we you, know. You don't need to see Krypton blow up again. Yeah. But Miller's like, why the hell not? Let's see. It looks right. awesome. Yeah. Though, so let's do it. Right. So, you know. It's dark and. I mean, horrifying. It, it's not, it, it's scary, but it's not like, there's no deep subplot about it. Jor and Lara are uh, running. <laughs> That's so That's weird. His first name. I know. Jor. Jor, name Jor L. Last name L. Yeah. I know, I know. We just can't, oh, Jor. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's like so, you're not finishing his name. It's yes. weird. I know. It's like it's short for something. It's it like is short. It. It's short for Jor L. You're not meant to say Jor. <laughs> so Jor and Lara are running away from the destruction. And so they wrap up Clark, or baby Cal, in what would become his cape. And they shove him into a rocket. <laughs> and they say goodbye. Uh, this Cal is young enough, or perfect enough, to remember mm. images from the destruction of Krypton. Right. So he gets into the pod. Mm -hmm. He watches his parents kiss and then get vaporized as he blasts away from his doomed homeworld. Did the rocket vaporize them? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the <laughs> rockets like, blasted them to death. It'll be quicker this way, Lara, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> and they were wrong, it was just an earthquake. Yes. <laughs> Whoops. So Cal rockets through space and they get some flowery narration by Miller, which explains how the, the rocket bounces around. It makes Cal throw up. Robot <laughs> hands come out from the walls and clean him up and oh. rewrap him and everything and feed then him and stuff. Feed him and stuff, and I guess give him like language. They weren't working on a, ro a, a rocket ship; they were working on a nanny. Uh, so yeah, they nanny go pod. out more. Exactly. This was literally just we're gonna stick him in there. We'll yeah. see him after the after the after the opera. <laughs> so, Cal lands on Earth. He crash lands into the into the Earth, like literally into the ground, and when. Cal realizes it's time for him to get up. He does, and he pushes open the rocket and unearths all of this dirt. And I like that idea that like yeah. the, the rocket like went mm -hmm. in. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so He's he like lifts open the dirt. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Jonathan Kent is there, and he sees this little baby or this little boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's more like a toddler. His cat, yeah, because he grows as he as he travels, and uh. when he gets out of there, he's draped in his cape, and he stands before him, and Jonathan picks him up. And this is where we like deviate from the origin a little bit. We play a little bit. Okay. With it, uh, where Jonathan Kent feels something probe the inside of his skull when Cal looks into his eyes. The baby coos, pleased, realizing that Jonathan Kent is not going to be hostile. Now, what? we can allow Jonathan to take me to my new home and let him think it was his idea. Essentially, Cal hypnotizes Jonathan Kent into thinking that grabbing this baby off the side of the road is a good idea. So what? that is yeah. now... Superman can hypnotize people? Yeah, he can do many things. He's got many powers. And one of which is baby hypnotism. <laughs> I mean, okay. maybe, maybe it's metaphorical. You know, the way that like, kittens hypnotize you even though you know they're terrible pets. What? Uh -huh. You know, cats are... Well, no. They take love and affection and nourishment and then give nothing back. No, they do give, they give plenty back. Yeah, they give purrs and scratches. No, insert uh, picture of Ripley. <laughs> 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 Cal gets stuck in the truck. Jonathan drives him home. Martha's not here. She's at the house where she belongs. <laughs> and uh, what, what part of the house? The kitchen. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> well, and please, this is not like going to be some domestic image of Martha wearing a, 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 like a handkerchief over her head, <laughs> desperately making dinner before John. Oh, wait, no, that's exactly what happened. Never mind. <laughs> so then Jonathan comes into the kitchen and he's like, look, honey, we have a baby now. 
And then the baby's got to hypnotize her. Bingo. She's like, and uh, what? Yep. We have what now? Yeah, and the, but but Martha is a, a kind-hearted woman. She's not going to be like, get that out of here. What are you, crazy? We're barely breaking even. <laughs> no, she's just like, oh, what? And then the baby hypnotizes her. And then they just they just, just accept it. it it's, it's like Frank Miller's like, no. Nobody would no take would in that. a child. At least that's, of all me. That's why the Kents are so great. Yeah, that's why the Kents nope, are Nope, they were hypnotized. <laughs> hypnotized. Oh, okay. But uh, like I was saying, maybe they're hypnotized the way kittens hypnotize you. Right. Like, you know, it's Not like, literally. It's I just, have to care for it. Yeah, I must. Yeah. I feel so bad for it. You'll yeah. die without me. Look at exactly. it's so tiny. Look at it trying to do things. Like, yeah. yeah. Adult things. Little Clark is growing up and he's showing his strength and displaying his powers and John and Martha are kind of like, uh, Weird, uh, but okay. But they're, they're they're taking it in stride. You know, the baby's like jumping, and they're like, "Man, you know, one day you're gonna jump, and you're never gonna let you're never gonna come down." Mm. And Martha's kind of like, and, "And you'll never come back to me." Oh, you're like, oh, yeah. it's not true. I mean, one day, you know, he's gonna oh. leave her for like other women. Maybe well, oh, her. well, no, he'll, he'll come visit one day so. he'll meet Doomsday, and uh, yeah, yeah, he'll be well, smashed and to then, death on <laughs> national television, and, never and she can watch her son die. Thousands of miles away from where her son was murdered, and she needs to like go into her life savings in order to buy a ticket to go fly there to watch him die. And of course, she won't be able to admit that that's his that that's her son. Mm -hmm. And then her husband can also pass from a heart attack in the middle of a cornfield shortly thereafter. He doesn't actually die in that heart attack. Right, anymore. right. Instead, he goes he he goes into the afterlife and he fights alongside his Korean War veteran buddies, and they they rescue Clark. But then Is the, that what happens? That's what happens in the issue, but it's not really what happens to Resurrect Clark Kent. Right, no, no, no. It's metaphorical. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we see the, the, the visualization of Clark's heat vision, which is that Martha's feeding him and the food is too hot, and he's trying to tell her that it's too hot, but he can't quite get speech ready yet, so he just sets the drapes on fire. <laughs> so we, we also see the um, approximation of what a child might look like if they were described to someone else who'd never seen a child before. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly that is how he is drawn. It's like a person, <laughs> but smaller. I think Ramita is going for a style. No. It's not working, but it's still <laughs> going for it. Like he's just creepy looking. Like look at that. Yeah. He's no. creepy. He's a creepy looking child. Yeah. He's not supposed to be. You know, some be. kids are creepy looking. Yeah, but he's not supposed to be creepy. He's supposed to be perfect. Mm. Maybe, maybe he's saying something maybe as that, depicted by Miller. Maybe yeah. that's Kryptonian perfection. Yeah. yeah, it's scary to us. We find it. I've oh, he's not he human. He would not do well there. <laughs> right. You know, he's an alien. They look a little bit weird. That's yeah. why Kara got kicked out. They were like, "You're, you're actually no, no. Yeah. You're hideous to our culture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you look like a dirty human, <laughs> like a perfect, gorgeous human. Yeah, get out. So Clark realizes he can hear everything. You know, he's like just mm. trying to go to sleep, and he's hearing the owls and the frogs and whatnot. So then uh, Clark's playing catch with his dad. He's a teenager. He has to be careful when he's throwing the ball to his dad. He's just like, he's fragile. They're all fragile. They're all just so fragile, all of them. I could kill uh, them all. I, I mean, could, what? Yeah, I could, uh. I could ruin the whole planet if I wanted to. But I don't. I'm a good man. So you know, he's playing with his dad, and his dad's just like, you know, like, this kid, one day, he's going to be strong enough to take off my arm. Meanwhile, in Clark's mind, he's like, I could do it now. <laughs> yep. You know, just John kind of underestimating him. Now it's yeah. high school. John's driving his son, Clark, to school. And you get this impression from John that he's like, he loves his son, but he's also scared for him. Not scared of him. Okay. Just scared for him. He's like, you know, you got to be careful. You got to rein it in. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, he doesn't say don't, don't anyone. save anyone, but he yeah. is like, don't. Don't showboat, don't push it, don't stop, right. don't, you know. Be like, right. be like at the end of The Incredibles. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. No, 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 pull back, pull back. <laughs> You gotta try, Not though! That much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, we meet a couple of Clark's loser friends. Clark immediately befriends, like, the losers or mm. the weirdos mm -hmm. of his class. Okay. And he becomes, like, the champion of them because he's gorgeous and powerful and everyone wants to be his friend, but he chooses to be friends with the losers. Okay. You know, it's a metaphor for how, like, Superman, like, slums it with the rest of us on this shitty planet. <laughs> But, uh, so, <laughs> we're the losers. We're the losers. Humanity. Hum humans. Yeah. And look at this great fine example of what humanity has to offer. Like this, this giant-headed, slow-witted, <laughs> lowercase, speech bubble-having character whose space helmet, they're, all the kids in class are, have to wear space helmets. So, what, what? what? Is this a private school? Like, how did they, where, where do they, they get, get these? they get these helmets? I don't know. It's clearly not private school. No. But they get them anyway. And it doesn't fit... 
his head. Right, it doesn't fit his gigantic Listen, head. Some people have big heads. They've got yeah. larger than normal heads. Right, like Mickey here. Yeah, just, who has just huge saying, head and no neck. Yeah, I wouldn't so make fun of them. Clark so much. feels bad for him, so he, t- t- <laughs> so he takes the helmet off of Mickey. He cracks it open and then quietly uses his heat vision to to oh. seal it back up so that it fits him. Because everyone's making fun of Mickey. Yeah. Oh, the helmet won't fit on his head. He's like, no, 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 it's just stuck. Here, look. Cracks it. Unfortunately, the art wasn't clear to the letterer, so Clark takes the helmet off of Mickey, and then he goes and cracks it and seals it. But the speech bubble from Mickey comes out this. of the helmet, yeah, and yeah. not out of Mickey's body. I remember oh. reading this, and I was, it took me Whoops. several tries through to figure out that it was just a screw up. I mean, it was it has just to a be, screw right? up. Like, I hate when that happens, but you know. It's usually not so egregious, but it's really big, so it's easy to see. Yeah. So anyway, now we're seeing, look at Clark's altruism. Everyone is like, Clark broke the helmet and then fixed it for Mickey. Everyone. Everyone in school is like, Clark's a good guy. Also, how did he do that? Is yeah, Clark, wait, does Clark what? magic? Does he have superpowers? What's going on here? Everybody. And unlike what? other pieces of amazing. Superman origins that are like, yeah, no, all of Smallville knows, because of course they would. Yeah. And it's just like... We're going to celebrate the small town atmosphere by being like, and they all keep his secret. Right. I like that idea. This is kind of just more like, Clark is really careless with his powers and identity. <laughs> uh, but they also coincidentally keep his secret. Yeah. And Clark is like the only one who thinks he's fooling anybody. <laughs> so He's like the rock in that... In that SNL sketch. Yeah. Where he's just like, the Superman suit <laughs> just busting out of his clothes. <laughs> so yeah, the, the girls are talking about him. Lana Lang is there. And they're like, hey, your guy over there, you know, he's the talk of the town. And she's like, so he's not my guy. I mean, mm. but, but one day. Mm. So <laughs> and we see Clark like hanging out with the losers. And he's talking about how... You know, he's normal like them. And like the goth kid's like, you are not normal. See, grabs his pen, jams it into Clark's hand. Uh, it explodes and hurts his own hand. He's like, look at you. Where are you from, man? Huh. You're not one of us. You're perfect in every uh-oh. way. Uh-oh. And then their bell rings and they're all like, okay, well, let's forget about that. And indeed they do. Uh-huh. So then it turns out that like there are these bullies in school and they torment Clark's friends. Mm-hmm. And they start with like innocent schoolyard pranks or not so innocent schoolyard pranks, but still things that their parents would sweep under the rug. Mm-hmm. And then it escalates from there. And it goes from stuff that's kind of like restraining for Frank Miller to, oh, right, Frank Miller's writing the book. <laughs> so, you know, his friends are like, somebody pours like a bucket of water into one of the loser's lockers, ruining Aww. his books. It's like, yeah, that's t- something somebody would do. That sucks. And the kid's just like, I can't take it much longer. Mm. Like, I'm going to freak out. Mm-hmm. And Clark's like, why don't you tell the principal? Like, everyone should. And he's like, yeah, that would make me a snitch. And they'd actually, like, beat me then. Mm -hmm. Right now they're breaking my things. Yeah. And Clark's like, damn it. God damn. And he's like, he, he, and this is the, these are the, these are the problems that weigh on him. Not yeah. the problems of a typical teenager. The things of, like, these, these people are targeted for no reason and no one's doing anything about right. it. They have no recourse. And, and what's worse is they're laughing about it. Like, they're celebrating in their cruelty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so he's talking to his parents at dinner and he's like, what am I supposed to do? So I, do I talk to them or do I, or do I smash them? <laughs> and John goes, you talk to them and then you smash them. <laughs> <laughs> and... His wife is if like... If they don't listen. If they don't listen to you. Because you're the authority here, son. No, he doesn't do that. He's not scary. No. He's not like secretly at night. He's like, Clark, listen to me. You're a god among insects. <laughs> don't, don't let anybody fool you. <laughs> don't let these fragile beasts let you keep you down, keep you small. They're small, Clark. Small like, like me. <laughs> My perfect death would be killed by you. So anyway, <laughs> instead he actually just like, you know... He just shuts up. Because yeah. Martha's like, no, Jonathan, that's not how we do things. And he's like, right, dear. <laughs> and Clark's like, yeah, but like my friends are scared. Like, I could fix that. Mm. And John's like, yeah, no no question you could fix yeah, it. Yeah, you sure could. Y'all, you, you better just do as your mother says. And that's the end of it. Mm. And Martha makes a point where she says, and it's later on, I think, in the book, where she says, nobody's really bad. Like, there are no really, really bad people. They're just confused. Well, mm. okay. <laughs> that's, like, that's where you get, like, yeah, yeah, Clark's yeah. naivete and kindheartedness. Obviously, Miller's saying, like, like Martha's an idiot. Yes. Let's all agree with that. Well, yeah. maybe, no! Maybe it's like, maybe she means, like, regular people, not, like, super villains. Right, well, there aren't any in this entire series. What? So, you know, the kids get egged, and it, just, it escalates. It gets well, worse and worse. They're, they're in farmland. Right, yeah, there's, there's an abundance. Yeah, they got eggs everywhere. Those, those are probably warm. Oh. 
So Clark goes to talk to them. Finally, he's just like, he just walks up to the gaggle of jerks. Uh-huh. And he's like, hey, we need to talk about what you're doing. And they're like, oh, look, Clark wants to talk to us. Yeah, yeah, let's talk to him. And they all just attack him. Yep. And he moves out of their way, and then one of them throws a punch, and he blocks it and shatters their hand. Yep. And he goes to the principal's office, like you've seen probably a thousand times oh. in your mind, or at mm-hmm. least in comics. And both the bully's parents and Clark's parents are there. John's thought bubble <laughs> is just ellipses. <laughs> Just just quietly looking at everybody and like he's so angry with his son for screwing this up. Uh, but he's also like, I don't know what to do here. Yeah. yeah. And Martha, of course, is like, you know, come on, Clark, you know, apologize to these people. Uh, the bully gets suspended. Clark gets detention. Okay. okay. All right. So the bully started it. There's some fairness there. Yeah. That's and shocking. He That's himself. the thing, yeah. But everyone's punished, which is right. exactly what would happen. Yes. Mm-hmm. That so is Clark goes home and... Martha says, like, nobody's really, really bad. Some people just get confused. And so then Clark goes to his room and he's doing some homework. And then Jonathan comes back up and he goes, you know, your mom is as fine a woman as you'll ever meet. But she's not always right. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you are a good guy, but you're no one's doormat. Hmm. Like, I see the change that you're going to put in the world. You're going to change it. Make sure to change it for the better. Oh. Like, when mm-hmm. you're actively altering our destinies, right. have us in mind when you do. <laughs> don't be a dick. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but. Uh, don't be a dick about it. <laughs> like, please, like, don't make us just, all wear please. matching uniforms when yeah. you take over society. I wish he had said that, and then, like, Clark later on could, like, remember his dad saying that in yeah. one of those, like, echoey, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. sound uh, Don't be a dick just about remember. it. Word <laughs> gets around that Clark kicked these guys' ass kindly. Uh huh. And the the weirdos are kind of happy about it. Yeah. But be. one of them gets the shit kicked out of them. Oh. Because they're not afraid. Because they own this town. Their parents are influential, or at the very uh. least noisy about it. So they know it's never going to get better. And in fact, Clark's lesson about this is they don't scare. Hmm. You need to scare them, which of course is a Batman thing. Mm. Yeah. That's why Clark never does anything about it. It's just an observation that Clark makes. Yeah, he's like, well, I can't just scare them. They're going to keep... Yeah, I, they, I, they don't scare The only thing They're I could afraid. do is, like, kill them. Right, I can kill them, yeah. and I don't have any other ideas. Right. <laughs> so, so Clark bores the bus, and by the end of the day, everyone in the Weirdo gang got their ass kicked. Oh, they wow. They all took beatings, and along with the beating, they were sent a message which says, Clark Kent is a bad guy to hang around with. If you know what I'm talking about, so it's like he, it's like he's facing like the high school mafia. Yes, like what this is what happens when you try to do right. The, yeah, they they, well, they in secret, you know, they form conspire. A, they conspire well, and they that, pick you off one by one, yeah. and there's nothing you can do. In about in it. his defense, uh-huh. it could be that Clark's the only powerful one of the group, uh, sure. and so they need to separate them. Yeah, uh-huh. and, I'm, and I'm sure like Clark wakes up and there's like a frog in his bed because obviously they couldn't get a horse, but right. the dissecting line. Yeah. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. Or maybe it's just a, just a shorn ear of corn. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, it's just a cob. Yeah. yeah. Several cobs. <laughs> so he, he so his friends don't want to sit next to him on the bus, and so he's forced to sit next to Lana. Oh, oh what a punishment. I know. Oh, no. And uh, Lana's like, listen. I've taken photos of those guys kicking the crap out of those kids. And oh, we're wow. going to send these photos to the right people. Who's that? Like, yeah, like probably the administration and like the newspaper and stuff. Like Ooh. we're going to really like shine a light on these guys' cruelty so that they can't deny it ever happened. Okay. Right. And so she says, meet me at my place, 8 o'clock sharp. And Clark's like, <laughs> a date? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lana is visited at night by a behooded Teen, mm. oh. and she believes it's Clark. She goes down there to meet him. It's actually all the bullies. And oh. they were like, we hear we have pictures of us. And she brought the pictures to show to Clark and to plan out what they were going to do. Right. And so they all attack her, and of course they're going to rape and murder her. How old oh are they? Oh my god. They're probably like 14, six, maybe, <laughs> maybe 16. Yeah. They're between the ages of 15 and 17. These, yeah. these, these boys are menaces. Yeah. They yeah. have to go. They're monsters. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. So, yeah, they talk about how they're going to get her and they're yeah. going to do all kinds of unseemly things to her body and, like, how she, they know she's never going to stop and she's never going to shut up, so they got to shut her up and everything like that. And then Clark, like, beats the shit out of them. Yeah. Uh, from the shadows, from the bushes. Mm-hmm. Because he's listening to his father and he's like, I'm not going to attack them. I'm just giving, you know, 
still well a friendly shove mm -hmm. you know and somebody else an underhanded pass and he's like no one breaks they all stay alive you know but they will remember that they were in a fight yeah and then clark takes lana and then flies away with her wow and meanwhile the bullies are like was that Clark Kent? There's no way that could be Clark Kent. They basically convinced themselves that there's no way yeah. Clark Kent could have done those things uh -huh. so that he doesn't come back and murder them. Mm, like, maybe right. it's that they're telling themselves that. I don't know who it was. We'll never know. We'll never know, but I know that right. we'll knock it off forever. Yes. <laughs> and that's it. We'll certainly never tell a court or anything mm -hmm. <laughs> because we don't know who it was. No, <laughs> exactly. We, no, I We're just stupid, yeah. yeah we yeah, all I just fell into I, each other. I, I fell. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> into my arm. So Clark flies like, yeah, away with right Lana. You fell. That's right, you fell. Clark just... <laughs> so. Yeah, he flies off of there, so now she knows. Yeah, so now she knows that he's superpowered, like everybody else, but now she also knows he can fly. Yeah. And oh. so uh, she drops, so he drops her off at her window. On her roof. And he's Good like. Good luck. Yeah, yep. figure out how to no, get No, she into came out through her window in the oh. first place. But she's like on she, the top of the roof. Yeah, she's got to like crawl gonna around right the here. side of the. It's a very small so lip to stand it. on. Yeah. See, look, she slides down the side, <laughs> climbs up through the window. Yeah, I would have just been like, whoop. I was going to put you right in there. <laughs> no, he wants to have a conversation with her first. Ah. So Clark drops off Lana on the roof, and they have this back and forth where she's like, okay, we've got everything we need. We've got the photos that we're going to send. Or it's gonna, we're still going to send the photos, and we're going to yeah. just ruin these kids' lives. Yep. Because screw them, they're jerks. Yep. And we're going to throw the book at them. Yeah. And he goes, that's true. Like, the reality is you've taught me that, like, if you want justice, you have to dig up the truth. Mm. Like a reporter would. Right. Uh. He will not remember this until much later. <laughs> okay. But it's important that it's it important. actually is set yeah. up. I'm like, right. oh, okay. Right. All right. Having read all three chapters, I'm like, right on, okay. Cool. He doesn't call back to it in chapter three, but thematically it's there. Okay. So maybe he's treating us like we're adults and we can actually read a story and understand subtext. But right. in any event, she says to him, uh, when are you going to give up your secrets to me? When are you going to tell me like all the stuff about you? He goes, let me court you first. Aww. Aww. And then we'll talk about it. <laughs> and so then they court and they get together and, you know, they're helping each other study for finals. Uh, Clark's reading all the books like Johnny Five, like really fast. <laughs> If you guys remember Short Circuit, or Short Circuit 2. Input, yeah. So Lana and Clark Court, uh, you know, they have makeout sessions, they study for tests, the families get together, they're oh. having cookouts together, yeah. uh, they're banging. What? You know, because of course. Uh-huh. And Clark has a fantastic time, you know, when it's night and he's out in the fields, like he can fly and be himself. Uh, so people can't quite tell what they're looking at. Yeah, they, or, they, or they choose not to. Right. Mm. You know, like... Uh, so what happens to those boys? Do they get detention or whatever? They're out of the book now. Oh. They're out of the story. They're, their role is over now. Oh. What happens to his it. friends? Do they... Uh, I guess that things work out for them, but we never see them either. What? Clark has a girlfriend now. <laughs> the order of operations matters. is you abandon your friends when you get a girlfriend. <laughs> but I mean, the whole thing was for them. Yeah. And I well, and he actually, took care of them, and now he's moving on. Actually, it was about rescuing... Innocence, right. saving the people who can't protect themselves. Right. So naturally, because he's abandoned his weirdo friends after a couple of years of high school, he joins the football team, uh -huh. and he becomes a huge star. And he does yep. a really, really cool move that his parents are in the, you know, in the, in the crowd. And they're like, yeah. And then one of them tackles Clark, and then another, and then another, and then another, and he's still trucking for the <laughs> touchdown. And as everyone's freaking out, how amazing this is. John and Martha completely deflate, and they're yeah, just so like, disappointed in him. Like, oh, that's not possible what you're doing. They're, well, they're, ang they're disappointed in him for being like, God damn it, Clark. Yeah, for showboating. You're showboating. Yeah. Yep. Too much, too. Yeah. yeah. And everyone, but they don't care. They're all yeah. having a wonderful we time. He won the game, though. He won the game, though. Who cares? Yeah. He has superpowers. Yeah. And, uh, of course, like, you know, Lana's like a cheerleader. She's like, yeah. And they're all having an amazing time. Mm -hmm. So then uh, Clark is helping John till the fields. It's it was the it was the big homecoming game. It's uh -huh. the finals. It's it's the end of high school. Right. And what, so the homecoming's at the beginning. Yeah, that's the beginning. Whatever. Of the year. <laughs> so Clark and Lana's romance spans the entire history of high school. He wins yeah. the big game. He wins the game. Yeah. The big the, the big the game. The big game. Then we cut to the end of high school, or graduation's around the corner. Okay. Or or maybe over. Mm -hmm. We don't see it, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But he's talking to his dad, and his dad's like, "I'm sure you got a right big pile of ideas for what you're gonna do now," and he's like, "Yeah, actually." Uh, I, I need I need to explore this planet. You said, and he doesn't say it in the book, but he says it right now, uh, according to Clark, which is that like if you're going to protect this planet, you need to get to know it. 
you need to learn about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and you can't learn about it from school book learning or whatnot. You got to get there and you got to go do it. Uh -huh. And so Clark is like, I figure since the ocean is most of the planet, I need to start there. The sea, it calls to me. It cries for me. I need to, I need what? the ocean. The ocean. I need to, I need to get in with the ocean. So I enlisted in the, with the Navy. Eat that, Aquaman. Yeah. Huh. Aquaman does not appear in this book at all. Despite and, this weird ocean thing? And you will wonder why <laughs> when we get to chapter two. <sighs> so he enlists with the Navy. Okay. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. See and, the world. Yeah. And Wait. John's like, whoa, whoa, you're not going to try college at all? We saved up all this money and your mother is going to fl flip the hell out. And no, he's we'll like, take a trip to the Cayman Islands well, he or goes, whatever. He goes, no, without me, you're going to need that money to, like, to take care of yourselves. Oh. And he's like, well, you're not leaving forever. And he's like, no, I mean, I'll be back. But like, I won't be around. Right, I'm not gonna live here. No, and so Clark bangs Lana, <laughs> and then the next morning, the morning of him shipping out, you know, he's still there and he sneaks out by flying away. Mm -hmm. uh, his parents are at the bus that's gonna take him away from them. Mm -hmm. and Martha's crying, and she's like, "He can't even be here." And she, he's like, he's, "He's he's gotta say goodbye to this lady." Come yeah, on, yeah. you remember us? We both couldn't stop crying when we both graduated. Mm. You're like, oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So then Clark says goodbye to his to his parents, and his mother says, "Now I gotta stuff your your backpack with this thing I made you. Mm. And it's the Superman suit." Mm. She's like, "I made it out of the the sheets that wrapped you when you were in your in your in your pod, and it was damn tough stuff. It broke like my sewing machine to <laughs> make it." <laughs> and so she shoves it in there, and he gets on the bus, and his parents bid him goodbye. And as he's on the bus, he's like driving away, and he's thinking about his future and the ocean. And but but there's still a little part of him that's still in Smallville, and he's thinking about Lana Lang, the woman he loves mm. with all of his heart. And he looks with his telescopic vision at the Lang farm, and there on the roof is Lana, who knows he can see her, and holds up a sign and says, "I love you, and I miss you." Mm. And he says, "I love you forever. I'm I'm not gonna be gone forever." I'll be back. Okay, the, like literally there's no way you're gonna be back. He will mm. never see her in this book again. Wow. But does he what? ever go back to Smallville? We don't get any coverage about that whatsoever, but presumably he must between the pages. Mm. I guess it's Weird. like, maybe maybe the message is like, you never do go home. Right. You can never go you home You can again. never go home <laughs> once you reach adulthood. Uh -huh. Or as, as Frank would say, manhood. Right. So, or godhood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Parents, <laughs> paltry things, playthings. So, yeah. It's a cautionary tale for people in high school yeah. who think that they're going to stay with their... With their friends with and their With their girlfriend family. or their boyfriend. Hey, and the it Kents turns out did. they never do. Yeah, the Kents did. And look they at how did. old and antiquated they are. <laughs> they gave Clark his moral foundation, sure, but that's, that's all he... He needed to go to Metropolis to be a hero, though. So Clark gets dropped off at the... Naval base, and he's ready to start basic. Okay. This is the biggest de departure for Clark. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that uh, before. Clark went to, I don't know. Are you trying to give me that? Yeah. <laughs> because in the original continuities, Clark goes to college. Right. Which he Then he still... learns how to write and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For as uncareful as he was with his powers in high school, mm -hmm. he is equally cavalier and uncareful. <laughs> It basic. Okay. You know, he's so, doing he's doing a thousand push ups. You know, the 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 the, the drill sergeant's like, come on, do more. And he's like, okay, blah, 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 blah. and they're like, oh my god. Uh, he, he, he's like, he, all right, guys, you gotta do as many as Clark can do. Like, Are you shitting me? He's still doing them. <laughs> uh, Clark is doing firing practice. He's oh shooting god. a gun. So and everyone knows he's naturally. Like, everyone must know that he's Superman. But there is no Superman for him to be recognized as yet, so it doesn't really matter. Right. So, but they do know his name's Clark Kent. So whatever. So Clark is like, yeah. shooting his gun. He's thinking about like the old rifle that his pa gave him and how he learned how to shoot with that. Mm. He's like, this is this is sleek and sexy and fast, and <laughs> it never it doesn't buck. And so I can, and I could get a perfect shot with these, and so I do. And he just just fills <laughs> the the bullseye with bullets, and they're just like. Holy crap! Yeah, this is just one a, hole in his paper. Yeah, <laughs> we got ourselves a sharpshooter on our hands. Oh. Meanwhile, the, the the his kind of superior officer Kurtzberg is the new father figure of the book. Uh. And Kurtzberg is like, uh huh, like he's the one who's suspicious of Clark's yep. abilities, but also is like he he wants Clark to slow down. He was like, sure, you could do it, right? But maybe you should dial it back, right? But should you do it? 
So he's like, okay, man. So, you know, Kurtzberg's talking to Clark. He's like, you seem to have a lot of prom, as everybody says they, that, you, that you do. I don't buy it because, no, you know, you, maybe you're just burning through your energy. But, like, let's put you at the front of the line. So, like, Clark's doing training. He's running. He's, you know, they, they send him to the, to the training exercises. They're in the ocean. And, you know, he's, he's swimming faster. Swimming than... faster. He's running farther. He's doing push-ups in the, in the ocean. Uh-huh. While Clark and his platoon are running along the beach, Clark is just looking at the ocean. Remember? Ocean. Yeah, the ocean, the, she calls. She cries for him. So he's looking at it. <laughs> so and his, weird. And his sergeant's like, hey, Kent, what the hell are you looking at? Uh, Face forward, man, run. And he's like, don't you understand, sergeant? It's so beautiful. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it is beautiful. And you're going to be cleaning out the latrines with your toothbrush for the next 16 hours. So Clark literally is just punished for being, like, sissy. <laughs> For liking the ocean? For liking the You're ocean the in the Navy. Yeah. You, you like the ocean a little too yeah. much. Don't be a Nancy Don't be about weirdo. it. I, I, just, I just, like, look, if that ocean wasn't there, you wouldn't have a job. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe my enthusiasm is something you could use right now. Look, yeah. the ocean is a thing that my boats of destruction float on. That's yeah. it. I use it as an instrument <laughs> it's a means to, an end. to kill other people. There's nothing romantic about it. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing beautiful about it. Haven't you ever seen a dolphin? Yeah, I kill those things constantly when I'm driving my engine of death through the... I kill them or I use them to disarm torpedoes. <laughs> those are the two things I use them for. Haven't you ever swam with one? Constantly. Hell no. I swam <laughs> through their guts. What about those baby sea turtles when they're going down the beach? Like, oh, okay, Yeah, they well, taste delicious. I, thought, I figured that's the one thing he's like, okay, well... Okay, well, okay, nobody well, loves them. Like, everybody loves I use paper turtles. straws. <laughs> yes. And I beat off seagulls who are trying to eat them. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> That is what I use my shore leave to do. I go to <laughs> beaches where I know their nesting is, and I protect the shit out of them. And that is all. Once I get into the water, though, I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, then they enter the ocean. I don't care about that. Now they're yeah. back in the war. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Clark is impressive, and Kurtzberg's like, yo, Kent, I get you're impressive. Friggin' knock it off. Stop being impressive. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so Clark has some shore leave. He goes to this bar with his buddies. There's a girl who's strong-armed by a man. Clark kicks the crap out of the guy. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a fight breaks out. They get mad at Clark. Clark, of course, is reprimanded for fighting. <laughs> yep. Just like school. Just like school. Just like school, man. All the rules, all these stupid rules. These, be these, someone... these insects with their, fa <laughs> their, their fragile bones. <laughs> yeah. So they, 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 they don't want me to fight because they're afraid of me. He does not do that. He, he's just like, he, he doesn't even point out the rules. Back. This isn't, the, this isn't, was it Brightburn? Yeah, this is not Brightburn. After Clark is reprimanded mm -hmm. for thinking like the, the ocean, ocean is beautiful. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's out with Kurtzberg, kind of like just looking at the ocean, enjoying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without being yelled at. And what does he see out there on the horizon but mermaids? I was, did we see that? What? Yeah, I mean, mermaids don't have to be, like, Ariel. Like, they're not all the little mermaids. And I the no, horrific creatures. I think Ethan's oh. incredulity is more like, wait, so we're just going to accept that there are mermaids? Uh, yeah, what? Because, yeah, uh, Has that there are mermaids. Has thing? Yes. Well, I, I don't understand. Oh, like, you, you, like, that's why you said Aquaman should be in this book. Oh, but I was also going to say, you're willing to accept an alien fell out of the sky, but not that there are cryptids? Well, <laughs> well, how come no one ever saw them? No one saw Superman because he wasn't physically on the planet. Yeah, Maybe only the, he can see them. Well, no. Because Kurtzberg is like, you see them, don't you? The mermaids. A what? It's like, <laughs> they're, they're beautiful. They... I can't and resist their sign. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Well, he's like, he's more like their beauty captivates people. And like when we're out at sea, sometimes someone will see them and then forget about the lady they have at home and like jump over the side. Uh, that's why he's mad about uh, him looking at the ocean. He's, yeah, like, he's like, I can't lose another one. I can't lose <laughs> another one to these freaking sea bitches. So literally he's just like, it's amazing. he goes, you know, dial it back. Maybe he enjoys yeah. some shore leaves. And then shark go, shark, I mean Clark. Shark. Yeah. <laughs> well, now he's shark. Yeah. He should be. Yeah, he should be shark, shark Kent. Kent. Clark goes on shore leave. He's at so a he's bar. So he's like, you have to get laid. Yeah, you yeah. need to do something that doesn't involve these 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 ocean monsters. <laughs> Beautiful though they may be. Uh, and so he goes to this bar with his platoon. There's a girl who's strong-armed by a guy. Clark steps in because he's all masculine. Starts a fight and then gets reprimanded for starting said fight. And so he's cleaning latrines and he's having a you know grand old time, you know, being punished. Mm -hmm. So he's like, screw that. I'm going to go see these, these these mermaids. So he, you know, stuffs his bed with a fake mummy version of himself. <laughs> and then he runs out and he jumps into the ocean and he just starts swimming around like looking for him. Yeah. And sure enough, he finds a freaking mermaid. Wow, that didn't take long. Well, no, because Lori is 
working on something. Her name's of, Lori? Yeah, Lori Lumeria. What is happening? Yeah, Lori right? This Mermaid? is happening? Yeah. This is what we're doing? Oh, you, you don't know the, the, the rich history of Superman having a dalliance with a mermaid? No. Because that's actually canon. That is freaking a thing that happened in every continuity for Clark, except what? for New 52. I've in, never heard of that. No. But Lori the Mermaid has been in Superman's comics forever. Usually, Clark is at university... And Lori is a mermaid that's pretending to be a woman. It's who Splash? Can't wa- it's, okay, no. <laughs> no. It be- no. It becomes <laughs> Splash. So when, when it starts out, Lori is a woman in a wheelchair who has a blanket over her, uh. over her tail to hide the fact that she's a mermaid. Right. She she's got Clark- polio or whatever. Right. Well, because it's like the 40s. <laughs> so Clark and she fall in love, and then it turns out she's a mermaid, and he's like, I don't care. And she's like, oh, we've come from two different worlds. And it doesn't work yeah, out. It's- She's yeah. like, I do. What, what? But, so, so then in the 90s, they retconned in that it is like Splash and that she can like get legs when she's on dry land. So Lori's been that around. that works a lot better. Yeah. I, well, it's this, more convenient. Yeah. So in this, Frank Miller's like, hey, you know who people forget about? The mermaid. Don't forget. But in Clark's rich history as his, you know, in his, in his youth, he banged a mermaid. So... <laughs> Clark's going around and he's he's being kind of like goaded in by Laurie, but it, it's clear that it's not malevolent. Mm-hmm. Laurie's more just like intrigued by him because mm-hmm. you know it's a surface dweller that can swim around and like kind of right. talk or something. And he, I think he, it's he more that, need to breathe. So, no, yeah. does he hypnotize her? No, does he hypnotize him? <laughs> he should do that every time, where it's just like everyone that I want to like me, I just hypnotize. He should do that to Batman. Yeah, but anyway, so, Batman's like no, <laughs> no. <laughs> he's got mirrors. <laughs> There, now you love yourself. Oh wait, you already did, you bastard alien. Get away from me, <laughs> kryptonite. Clark follows Laurie and he finds out that there was a American spy submarine that like failed and crashed into Atlantis. Atlantis is either tiny or that's a really big submarine. It is a very big submarine and also Atlantis isn't very big. Apparently okay. not. It's, 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 it's got like, maybe like a hundred people live there. Right. Maybe. <laughs> Don't forget, That's like, weird. You know, there's water everywhere. So, you know, you can, you, you, it's not like the weather this is, a, this is, is going to be a, a, an, an effort. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be more surprised when you find out who else lives here. So, Atlantis is under siege by this disaster. And so, Clark steps in and helps everybody, you know? Uh-huh. And, and all the mermaids are, you know... And all the beautiful creatures and live aliens. There. Jesus live there. Christ. <laughs> All the mermaids are, you know, working at the relief effort and they're yeah. just watching this one man, like this, this guy with legs. She has like a oh. butt. Yeah, she's, yeah a, she's got a butt. But she's a fish person. Well. Fish person. So he's... What? So he basically, he spends the whole night saving Atlantis. And... They also have legs. They have kind of legs. They, they, they have yeah. enough of legs so that she can have a vagina. Some of them <laughs> have legs. He <laughs> saves Atlantis practically single-handedly yeah. and woos Lori in the process. Right. And Lori's like... Oh my God! I am going to have this man, body and soul. He will be mine. Oh. So then Clark just kind of like wanders out of the ocean, like you know, some kind of Terminator robot or whatever, <laughs> and he goes back to the barracks. And Kurtzberg is like, "There you go." Yep. After visiting the beautiful creatures in the ocean, you just I told you not to do that. You, you just, did the exact thing I, I told didn't you not to do. I want you to do. But now I also know that like you're an immortal creature that can do anything, and I always kind of knew that. And so this kind of confirms my suspicions. Right. But also, Kurtzberg is like a cool guy, so he's not going to give Clark a hard time. Right. So then we pit Clark Thank against his God. Um, he just keeps running into people who are like cool guys. Yeah. Yeah. And right. And not like cool dad figures. And not like looking for our promotion. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's an alien. Hey, found, I found an alien. Right here, this guy. This guy, this guy alien. Here it is. This guy right here. Right, I, I, uh, I can prove it. Metal, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> ah, see? Yep, he's totally dangered fine. all of us. <laughs> so Clark has a sparring match with a couple of his guys, kicks the shit out of them handily. Yeah. And they're like, all right, Ken, since you're a born warrior, a natural killer. And Clark's like, oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I'm sending the wrong message. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, they, <laughs> so then there's a uh, there's an emergency and they're the only ship in range. <laughs> no, they're the only... They, there's an emergency that's off the coast, and they, they and so they're like, hey, Kurtzberg, put together a team of your best guys and send them out. Your best students, right? Like your trainees? They're yes. Not... They are not soldiers. But they're is the only ones test? in range. No, it is not a secret test. There is a 
oil tanker that is taken over by Arab terrorists. Let's say, because uh, it's the Frank Miller book. It's so a container it has to be ship. Arab ter- terrorists. Right. It's a container ship. Yeah. You said an oil tanker. It has oil in it. It has oil in it? That's... Enough to burn Newark to the ground, they say. <sighs> it's a container ship Newark? that'll carry oil. That's... Wait, okay. do they specifically reference Newark? Yes. So yeah. they do their SEAL thing where they... They sneak on board. There are hostages who are killed, but they have more hostages on the on the deck. So Clark uses his X-ray vision to tell them like how many guys are on the front. They're uh-huh. like, Jesus, you know, so, how do you how know, do you know that? Well, I can see them in the them? reflection of the of the of the mirror. Oh, the yeah. like, sure, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, sure. Whatever. Clark knows. Let's just get him. So they go in. They try to kill the the terrorists, and Clark won't do it. He like right. hits one with the butt of his gun, and they're like, you have to kill him. I huh? want bodies in this thing. Right. That's enough. He says we need corpses. <laughs> so. <laughs> for what? So for your Frankensteinian like uh, you know experiments no, back at the on base. No, this ship. We I don't need corpses deal... for the mermaids. That will make them love me. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is all about. <laughs> I dump them all overboard. They you can't bodies. have them. I have to have them. <laughs> Damn you, Clark. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> no, that's not what happens. <laughs> so instead, Clark's naivete allows one of them to pull a grenade. Uh huh. Clark goes and grabs and holds the terrorist hands over the grenade. Right. And they're like. Ken, turn him around so I can shoot him in the face. What are you doing? And then the grenade goes off and Clark contains it. Right. And protects the blast so it doesn't kill either the terrorist or anyone else around him. Wow. Okay. And he goes, see, look, it was a dud. And Chris was like, sure. Dud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that was very convincing, Clark. Jesus. So then <laughs> they have to report that to their superiors that Clark refuses to kill yeah. on a live fire mission. Right. And so Clark washes out. They kick him out. Oh. Yeah, that would do it. They give him two weeks for some reason. Clark clears out the That's barracks. He gets his Superman costume ready to go. And so he packs up. He's ready to leave. And Kurtzberg meets him after his squad like salutes him and says goodbye. Because oh. they're like, you were holding us up. So yeah. then, We were in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Who will clean the latrine? <laughs> so Kurtzberg meets him outside. And he's like, hey, we're going to have an adult, an adult, mature, rational, man-to-man conversation now. Okay. Now that, now that you're not my... Subordinate. Now yeah. that I'm not your commanding officer, we're just two guys who love mermaids. So Kurtzberg has another fatherly lesson to teach Clark, which is, you know, the world has plenty of fires in it. Your job is to put the fires out. Mm. Like you're a protector. Stay strong and deal with those problems. Right. So it's you know it's the lessons that he's learning from these these strong male figures in his life. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then he and then Clark's like, thanks a lot, man. Like it was you know, it was great having you. So then Clark leaves, and Kurtzberg's like, uh, the gate to leave is that way. And he's like, yeah. And then he just hops over the fence and just goes into the ocean. He just walks into the ocean what? with his, like, clothes on and everything. Like, this like, is cool. God damn it. He goes, well, bid the ladies hello for me. Jeez. <laughs> oh, How? We, okay. So Clark goes underwater, and he meets up with Lori, and they completely make out. Yep. And Clark's going to live under the sea with this mermaid for the rest of his life. And How will he breathe? He doesn't need to. He doesn't to. need to. Or he occasionally goes up for air sometimes. Yeah, we never see like him do that, but the something. fact is he can communicate with her. We never see speech bubbles. It's more just like... Well, he can live in space, right? Yeah. So like, well, pre-crisis, yeah. Uh, or Frank Miller. So, <laughs> But maybe it's mental. Like Maybe it's, uh, it's telepathy. Not Clark telepathy, but like Atlantean telepathy. Uh-huh. In any event, they can communicate and he doesn't need to breathe or something. So they're making out, and they're having a great time, and uh, Lori's like, well, if you're going to stay here, you got to meet my dad. Oh. Oh, by the way, my dad is Poseidon. A what? God of the ocean. What? Yeah. Is he all the mermaid's dad? Probably. Probably. That sounds like they're a thing Poseidon. Siblings. Oh, don't worry. It gets more Millerian and gross. So, it's like, it's like, it's almost like uh, the little mermaid then. It's yeah. like Triton and yeah. his daughters. Yeah, like, which one's your which one's your daughter bride Triton you creep <laughs> so Ariel was obviously that's why he's so mad what no it's a weird it's <laughs> a weird way to look no, at it that's not what it is that's a weird thing to say <laughs> so Clark puts on a Superman costume for the first time underwater to go underwater meet Poseidon yes he's like I gotta look my best he yeah. says wear your best suit yeah so he goes he he he, uh, he he goes to the gates he's met by a giant golem which attacks him he kicks the shit out of the golem what? 
He goes to the Poseidon. Oh, yeah. When you see my dad, there's going to be a giant golem. Oh, just, just fight it. Just fight it and win. And <laughs> just defeat it, and then you can go talk to him. And you can go him. talk to him. This happens with my boyfriends all the time. What? Most of them she don't make it past that. this. They never yeah. do. So, so she's, That's why I like you. I right. saw that you were strong, and I knew you'd be able to get past the golem so you could actually meet my parents. You're the only man yeah. who's been able to do that. That's right. So <laughs> Superman <laughs> fights the golem and wins. This is the pattern for the rest of the book. What? Superman wants to be a cool guy and nice. Poseidon sends a big thing to fight Superman. Superman barely has a struggle against it and wins, impressing everyone around him except for Poseidon. That happens, I think, four times. Well, Poseidon is a god. What? So, the first golem test is now out of the way. He gets before Poseidon. He, you know, bows or kneels. Yeah. Poseidon is a full-on merman. Yep, he's just a mermaid. Yep. He that does, is. He does. Not, it's a merman. Merman. He's not a mermaid. Whatever. Mer dude. Yeah. <laughs> Merbro. Yeah. Merbra. <laughs> Sitting so, on an octopus throne. Yeah. It's dope. That's so, Ursula. Yes, there she is. <laughs> so, Poseidon's like, pfft, he looks like a frog with his stupid frog legs. What? Like, you know, yeah, some of them have legs. Is that what they call people? Uh, frogs? Yeah. Well, he calls him frog legs. Oh. You know, because it's derogatory. So, uh, Laurie's like, this is my boyfriend, and he's going to be part of the kingdom now. And Poseidon's like, no. No, he's not. Oh. And, and I'm going to prove it by throwing another giant thing at him. Uh-huh. So, like, they drop a big thing on him. Okay. Like, basically, he says, like, go, go, and, like, go and wait for the next trial. Okay. So, Clark leaves the kingdom. He goes outside underwater uh -huh. and he waits and then poseidon basically drops like a big rock a big rock on him <laughs> superman then look he failed the trial the rock fell, the rock on, fell him. on him oh. and, he, and he was crushed but Did, superman does... isn't crushed by it and because superman holds up a tiny umbrella right <laughs> he breaks in the rock and everyone in, in, in atlantis is like whoa whoa, whoa. Out of that rock. yeah then like you know, they throw deadly cartoonish sea creatures at him like an electric eel zaps him and it doesn't affect him at all in fact he feeds off the electricity. Turns out electricity actually makes him stronger. Oh. New power. Oh, like electric blue. Yeah. Oh, it's foreshadowing. That no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, uh, you know. And they're, and they're shooting him with quills. It doesn't matter. Right. You know, then, then, then his greatest warriors fire, I don't know, lasers out of their tridents. Yep. Sea lasers. And, yeah, uh, just, and like, uh, just like uh, Triton. Triton, yeah. Yeah. King Triton, yeah. yeah. So then uh, Superman just takes it. And he's like, when are they going to stop? Yeah, what do you want? You want me to kill you? What am I supposed to do? Right, so he just waits. Is this supposed to be like the like Herculean trials? Yes, absolutely. He wants you to think that. Except yes. that the trials are in no way challenging and the, are totally lame. And they're not yeah. at all like that. Like, Hercules had to do a whole bunch of stuff. Like, yeah, no, find something different thing And like, save this yeah. and blah, blah, blah. No, it's, it's just literally stuff just happening Poseidon to him. takes big things and drops them on him each time Superman has narrowly inconvenience and then... He has to face against Poseidon. Yeah, look at what Superman is. Yeah, look at how strong and we, invincible we he is. Yeah, look at look at how much he accomplishes. Right. So uh -huh. they, they they do the <laughs> same thing. Standing there. Literally, he just stands there and uh, like they throw things at him. A kraken shows up. Oh and, yay! And he punches it. They release it. They do. Well, they, they do. release a kraken, not the kraken. Oh okay. So, and all you, you're just getting tons of narration here. Oh, because like, well, the narration there's is no a, one to talk. Yeah, no. Well, the narration is dialogue between Laurie and Poseidon, in which uh, Poseidon's like, no, you will marry me. I what? had you so you could be my wife. Uh, you're going to take your mother's place. There's literally a line that says, you will take your mother's place in every sense. Like, don't mince words here. We are going to bang. Wow. I, okay. Up. Which I guess Laurie wasn't really aware of, but kind of like her romance with Superman has forced his hand. So, right. yeah. And also, I mean, I guess it's kind of Greek Guardian it's, of yeah. like yeah. Frank to reference that sure, yeah, sort no, of it relationship. Oh, it is. But Superman doesn't go like, you're gross. That's gross. I'm not from ancient Greece. Yeah. yeah. We're not I'm doing not that. I'm not from around here. Yeah. That was a long time ago, man. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, things have changed. You yeah. creep. You creepy creep. You creepy fish man. Here, go check out the internet. You'll be fine. Yeah, here. Here's all... Look, this is amazing. I'm looking at this. Lori hardly says anything. No, here. she's... It's all just Poseidon, like, barking orders at people. Yeah, uh, and she's like... And she's, like, just waiting to see what like, happens. She's, she's waiting for him, because she knows yeah. he's going to die. She's pretty much sure of it. Really? She doesn't want him to, but right. she's like, maybe... She didn't, You'll she never defeat the Kraken. Well, it's like, 
I don't think she even knew there was a Kraken phase because nobody got past the goal. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh my god, there's a Kraken? Okay, no, he's not gonna make it. So he gets he gets encircled by the Kraken. There's like yeah. ink or something yeah, that a lot of protrudes ink. from the Kraken. The well, he startled things. it. But yeah, it's, yeah <laughs> he, he does because the Kraken didn't expect to not beat it. So you know, Superman uh, he, he he gets batted around by the Kraken, but ultimately, of course, in true fashion of this book, uh, he is swallowed by the Kraken, and then the Kraken oh. returns to Poseidon victorious, though uncomfortable it feels indigestion (laughs) and so poseidon's like see he couldn't he couldn't face the kraken and then the kraken barfs up superman and superman's covered in you know stomach acid and whatnot but unscathed and uh, because he wouldn't he didn't want to kill it because it's you know it's just a creature just listening to poseidon Mm -hmm. so you know he's just like hey laurie your dad's kind of a dick yeah Poseidon's like, nope, not gonna happen because that wasn't the Kraken, that was the baby Kraken. Here comes the real Kraken. Oh, come so on! A bigger Kraken comes uh, in and it attacks Superman. Is that one the real Kraken? This is the Kraken. This is, oh, they, they actually, okay, now they released now they, it. Now they released the Kraken. Yeah. They call it the Kraken. Nobody says anything like releasing shouldn't, the Kraken. Shouldn't the Kraken be upset with Poseidon for sending its young Yes. to die, possibly? Well, but Superman didn't kill the young and also, you know, maybe the, maybe the, the relationship's a little different because he's the god of the sea. Mm. Good lord. Yep. There's the Kraken. And it's pretty dope. I'd love to see, like, you know, oceanographers and other such people trying to, like, track currents while this is all going on. <laughs> like, there's a bunch of crazy-ass shit it's... happening right here off the coast of wherever. It's earthquakes and yeah. crap. Yeah. We, well, uh, right, How is what? it not, like, destroying the structure that right? they're in? I guess because it, it's, like... many times larger than it. I guess because it's, it, it, it's one of the protectors of this place. Although, if it was, why didn't it do anything about the submarine? Right? Right. I love the two of them swimming around together, like... Child and parent Kraken swimming together yeah, as one. Yeah, it's cute. It's like Sea World. Yeah, it's nice. It's beautiful. But so, and just as deadly. It, 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 so it, the cre- the Kraken tries to crush Superman. It doesn't. Superman smiles, and then the Kraken's like, "Well, well I'm not gonna beat it." <laughs> that was my one move. Well, like if if I'm not gonna crush it, it's like my teeth are gonna break against it. So right yeah. now. So then the Kraken leaves, and Poseidon's like, "Fuck this kid. I'll, I'm leaving. One day." I'm gonna I'm gonna kick the shit out of Superman, and then he leaves. He, he took l- away my daughter, bride. my princess bride, as he calls it. So, so then weird. Poseidon abandons Atlantis. This really scales my tail. I'm out of here. <laughs> Literally, Poseidon abandons Atlantis to stew in it, and Superman and his girlfriend Lori run Atlantis. What? Where the hell is Aquaman? He does not appear he in this book. He don't exist in this world. He doesn't exist world. in this world, except he does. Until he shows Frank up wants to write year one Aquaman. Aquaman. Year yeah. one. Now he's shown up. Aquaman's been in other yeah. books. In the... In Dark Knight Returns. In yeah. the Dark Knight Returns universe? Yeah. yeah. This is all part of the Millerverse. Which one was he in? Uh, he was in Dark Knight 3 Master so, Race. Uh, well, I didn't So in Dark Knight one. Returns... There are mermaids, technically. Yeah, yeah. yeah technically, and Dark Knight Returns. Unless there was some sort of mermaid genocide. Right, probably. I mean, conceivably, there must have been, because here's what happens in Chapter 3. All right. Lois Lane. Oh! Oh, hey, I know her. Yeah. That's... Lois Lane And is... she's not a mermaid. No, okay. just a person. She's in this deep sea, James Cameron-esque <laughs> exploration machine. Is she going to the Challenger depth? Wait a minute. Just real quick. Yeah. Lana... Lori, Lois. Lois. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and, and they all have LLs. It's Lana Lang, Lori, La, Lamaria. Lamaria, and Lois, Lois, Lois Lane. Clark has a type. <laughs> <laughs> and, or a type has and Clark. Lex Luthor. And Lex Luthor. Oh. He's secretly in love with Uh-oh. Lex Luthor. Oh my Uh-oh. God. I figured it out. <laughs> so Lois is exploring the depth of the ocean because she has like a story that she's trying to get to. But then like, she Volcan- piloting the ship? Yes. And so the, this volcanic explosion happens and it attaches and it attacks her vessel. And it turns out that it's not a volcanic accident at all. It's the Atlantean defense system to protect oh. them from the outside world. Okay. Unfortunately, they didn't know that like Lois Lane was a civilian. So her craft is damaged and she's going to die. And then Superman shows up. He grabs the craft and he blasts it out of the ocean and then saves Lois. Of course, they're at a untold depth. 
so she's freezing to death. Oh. So Superman takes her out of the vessel, flies her up to the to the surface, brings her to the beach, and he does CPR on her, making sure not to like blast her lungs out of her chest. Yeah. <laughs> And That's which, an actual concern. I yeah, it is it a concern, be, yeah. and Miller puts it in there. Just don't make him laugh while he's doing it. No, exactly. <laughs> because clearly Frank Miller has seen mall rats and knows that the only way that Superman could bang regular chicks was with a kryptonite condom. <laughs> that would kill him. Superman basically resuscitates Lois, and then he's like, okay, there's more going on here. I need you to, like, get out of trouble. So he puts her on a convenient top of a tree and leaves her there while he goes back to the beach to face against the secret cadre of soldiers who are tracking him. What? Yeah. Oh, That's also happening? That's also happening. And so Superman just allows them to get tired from beating him with batons. And then they, not unlike Poseidon, throw like increasingly larger obstacles to Superman and Superman easily defeats them each and every time. They shoot him with lasers. He turns out he can absorb lasers or whatever. They hit him with like a, a net or whatever. Yep. And then he just breaks the net and hurts everybody with it. And then they're basically like, hey, listen, like you're a loose cannon. We don't know who you are and blah, blah, blah. Like they do the whole Man of Steel thing at him. Yep. And Superman's like, shut up, I'm knock not, it off. It's hurting you. I'm not, I'm not gonna interested hurt you. in Look, attacking you. I have like an accent. I'm from here. How do they know about him? Never addressed. Never explained. <laughs> like, he was underwater! And either they were tracking Atlantis, and that's why Lois was down there in the first place, mm. they were following Lois, or they've been tracking Superman, and they thought maybe this is an opportune time to get him. It's, who the hell Look, knows? I read the Atlantis newspaper, and I heard about this guy who defeated the Kraken. He is a He's problem. He's super strong. And then we, we, we interrogated this guy, Kurtzberg, and <laughs> he gave us so much information. And then all, there's an entire town that knows who he is. <laughs> We also got like an entire like you know hours worth of conversation about mermaids. Yeah, which Kurtzberg would not shut up about. So <laughs> he put a bullet in the back of his head. <laughs> so that's rough. So anyway, Superman goes to Lois's uh, dying body because she's freezing to death now. Right. So he steals her wallet and he reads that she's like an agent of the press. Uh huh. And so he wraps her up in his cape and then flies her to safety. Then Clark is enrolled. At college. F what, what about his mermaid wife? Never addressed, never explained. So this is a book about how Clark abandons the women that love him. Yes. That he said he loved. And in fact, yes, absolutely. In every chapter, he falls head over heels in love with a woman and then immediately betrays them for another woman. Or at the very least, he will abandon them for another woman. Because of course, if you know your Dark Knight Millerverse history, Superman and Lois Lane don't end up together. No, it's right. him and Wonder it's Woman. It's him and Wonder Woman. Which, yep. by the way, where are the L's? Right. Yeah. That's well. Diana Prince. The thing is, he needs to abandon type. So <laughs> Superman goes to college and graduates. Uh, with what money? Uh, presumably the money that his parents squirreled away for him. They, they, I guess he touches back. I guess after <laughs> abandoning him, because he says he's been there for like over a year. So without any contact with anyone in his life, he lived under, under the, the sea with his sea bride. <laughs> so wait, was like, was like Ma, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> was Ma Kent like sending care packages to the bunker and the guys there are like, no one tell her. No, they sent He's... Robert Loja to tell her. <laughs> Hasn't no anybody told, told you? Him. He scrubbed out of the no, military. No, I assume they're all like... He walked into the sea and was never heard from They all took turns writing her letters back saying, thank you, send more cookies. <laughs> yes, exactly. They all <laughs> love Martha Kent. sending food. Yeah. Martha Dude, had never stopped. Martha had 12 sons. <laughs> <laughs> One of them just wouldn't stop writing super specific poetry about mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> so, huh. Clark goes to college... And he's inspired by Lois and her pursuit of the truth. Oh, remember? Oh, uh, yeah. So he goes to college to become a writer, become a newspaper. So do man. they have a relationship at all? No. This is finally when he learns to dial it back. He's Amen. like, I could write brilliantly, but I only write pretty well. How do you? I could super... get triple A. Like I could get straight A's, but instead I only get like A's and B's. How do his superpowers make him a better writer? Because he's, he's super at everything. No. His yes, brain is super. He's got a super brain. But that doesn't mean that you've got like the creativity or passion to be a writer. No, he that's, also that's, has that. That's also thanks to the kids. I mean, like, but because of the yellow sun, it makes it even better. Yeah, he's super inspired. He's super... Observant. Uh, observant he's super articulate. Super intelligent. Super, super creative. creative. Yeah. Super uh, articulate. Yeah. Uh, super good motor control. Right. Uh, super skilled at everything. Super penmanship. Yeah. 
He's super in every way, Tiffany. He's Superman. <laughs> Except when he fights Batman. Right, then he's a chode. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, he, he graduates and then he gets a job at the Daily Planet and, you know, they know that Perry White's a workhorse, they're gonna put him to the test. They're gonna really teach him the ropes. Uh -huh. And he's excited about it. And so, he goes to Metropolis and it's great because he goes to the planet where he knows Lois is working. Mm -hmm. And he's about to walk up to her when he realizes she's going to think he's Superman. Huh. He's yeah. Like, oh my God, she's going to immediately recognize me. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even though it's been a couple of years since the last time I saw, I saw her, there's no way she's going to forget me. So he goes uh, to the costume shop and he gets like a nerdy fedora and a, and a bunch of glasses and he adopts the Clark Kent disguise. Right, and immediately she's just like, oh, you're that guy. I say it'd be cool. Right. No. Yeah. No, she is a she's an idiot. So that, or she's just like, you don't impress me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that Lois, don't Lois me much. does manage to maintain some semblance of integrity in this story. Oh. He's focusing on the big problems, putting out the big fires. Yeah. And he's like, I can't be bothered by purse snatchers or muggers. I have to go after the big fish. So he's like listening to like banks and activity, and he he goes into a a, a big bank robbery, and he rescues the people there and stops the bank robbery. Yeah. And, uh, he goes to the planet, he becomes Clark Kent, ace reporter. Uh, you know, Perry White is exactly as you'd understand him to be, and he's mm -hmm. barking orders, Jimmy Olsen's there, Lois Lane's there. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a big hostage situation at Lex Luthor's, you know, tower. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so they scramble Lois and Jimmy. Right. Uh, they are trying to get Clark, but Clark tells Jimmy that he has to go to the bathroom first. Uh -huh. uh, Lois calls Clark useless, and while Clark is changing into Superman, he knows what she said, because he has super hearing, yep. and it like hurts him. You know, he's like, like, I know I'm not useless, but she thinks I am. Yeah. And I don't like that. Well, just like, it's, it's, you know, I, I could be so much more for her. It sticks to him like a hot poker. It always does, each and every time she says it. She says it a constantly. lot. So she's constantly just, calling him useless. Yeah, yep. so like, most people are just like, wow, what a man. And she's like, you Suck. Yeah, he's useless. like, no, but I, did I, did I, did I ever tell you about the time I lived under the, under the sea and was doinking mermaids and what? stuff? She's gone. I beat Poseidon himself. Oh. Sure you did, Ken. Yeah, whatever. Sure Poseidon, you did. god of the ocean. <laughs> that, I you don't... are a piece of work, Ken. <laughs> a useless you think piece I'm of work. Oh, you so, you, you can't even make shit up like a normal person. Right. <laughs> There's a hostage situation at Lex Luthor's. Whatever, building. Tower. Yeah. Right. Clark, of course, knows this because he's uh, taking a page out of Batman's book and sitting on a building in yep, the rain. Sitting yes. on a building in the rain. <laughs> well, there is a big stuff. homage, I think a full page homage, where he's, it's just a full page image of him flying and we got the lightning bolt. The lightning bolt. Oh, there it is. By the way, gorgeous it image. It looks cool. But yeah. also like, yeah, man, we saw, I liked it better when it was the cover of the Dark Knight It was cooler when the Batman did it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, the the hostage thing, you know, it's by the numbers. Yeah. Bad guys, they're distinct. They have silly ass, you know, outfits on. They have they have masks. They have emoji masks. They have emoji masks. Yep. No. Uh, so they look scary. But they do it like it almost looks like they're wearing giant smiles. Yeah. Uh, so Superman defeats them easily. Uh, he rescues little kids and saves people and whatnot. Uh, he beats them, and then Lex Luthor comes out. Yep. And he's like, <laughs> and. There is no moment in this book where it's like, these men work for Luther. Right, right. They do. And it's obviously like, a, like an event that uh -huh. Luther arranged so that he could talk to Superman. Right. But at no point does anyone say that. It's just that Clark calls Luther a liar. Uh. And then Luther says, come on into my office. Get out of the rain. Let's talk. And it's like, well, but if Clark thought that Luther arranged this whole thing, that he wouldn't engage with him. But okay, let's just do this anyway. So Clark goes, this is, by the way, the, weak, the weakest chapter. Mm. This is where the one is... where it's like, ever, like the first two chapters, you're like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. oh, watching him upbringing, well, watching him fall in love. The second chapter, you're like, okay, here's his basic training. We've never seen that. We're also going to watch him fall in love with a, with a fish person, right. so it's like, which, we, which, we, which most people haven't seen. So uh, like, I... oh, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. He and then, fights the Kraken. He fights like a little Kraken, and oh, then he, he also fights, fights like a big fights Kraken. another, okay. Uh, just, it's a little weird, but yeah. I'm still with you. This is the book that lost a lot of people when they were critically reading it. 
this one. Yeah, it was where they were like, okay. Not the Kraken. The Kraken Poseidon thing, they were like, listen, adventure. I've never seen that before. I don't understand it's what true. it is. That is a true fact. I don't understand I have never seen what it is before. about the concept of I've never seen it, therefore it's good. <laughs> therefore it's legitimate and good. Right. Like, it's critically celebratory because I've never seen it before. I've never seen a lot of things that I never want to see <laughs> or that I wouldn't call high art. <laughs> and by the way, I know he's not going for that. You yeah, know, clearly well, not. I, I'm not expecting it. Yeah. I know he's not trying to deliver it. He's giving us something interesting. And at the very least, you can, you can, you can give him that. It's interesting, kinda. Yeah. And sure, you know what? I've seen a thousand interpretations of Superman's origins. I get it. You're gonna be something else. Yeah. Fine. Hypnotism. But fish people. Did it have to be fish people? It was already fish people. That's the thing you don't understand. Is that that's something that Miller's bringing back? I'm bringing it back. It's baby. a it's a callback. Yes. But to there being a fish person in his life. Yeah, but not but him. him ruling literally Atlantis. live under the ocean and live as king of Atlantis. For like a year before abandoning it for no reason. Not no reason. He wants to sleep with this woman. Yeah, now. so he can get some tail. Yeah. Different tail. Different tail. Non scaly tail. Yeah. So tail. he's a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> or the, 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 the land, the, 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 the cities cry to me now. Like, literally, he went out one day to go deal. Oh, I've got to go save this human. She's going to die. And he never came home. He never home. came back. <laughs> yeah. I know. Can you imagine? <laughs> Like, what the hell? I just gonna, came out, I just, he just went out for some cigarettes, yeah. and they never came home. They're going to write a year two, and she's going to be the villain. Yeah, I right? So. She should oh, be. Oh, and, and all the children they have. All the yeah. half Kryptonian, half fish people. Yeah, because she had, like, 30,000 eggs exactly. or whatever. Exactly, fertilized them all. Yeah, and he was like, oh. But we were only together that one time. She's like, yeah. That's all it takes. You have two. He has 5,000 children. He has super reproductive abilities. We do know this, because in Dark Knight Strikes Again... Every time he sleeps with Wonder Woman, she is pregnant. In fact, when they have Let's... when they have six page sky sex, once they finish, she says, "I'm pregnant again." She knows it. Superman and Lex talk, mm -hmm. and Lex unveils this redonkulous plan. Uh huh. He's Even like, for Lex, it's it's stupid. Okay, I'm ready. So it's not Lex. What happens to his, his cape, real quick? He draped a child in it yeah. and left her hanging on like a spire so that the police could go get her because the cape would keep her like shielded hey, from the rain. And how are you going to get that cape back? Oh, they look. leave it for him when they retrieve the girl because they're like, we don't want to piss him off. Leave the cape. Yeah, fair That's enough. The, that is ha that happens in the book. Leave the cape yeah, and a, a thank line. you note. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because well, Frank knew you were going to ask that question. And they just whisper it. <laughs> and he's like, I know. So... <laughs> They can't superhear you. No, no, no. He, no, he's right behind them. <laughs> Thank you, Superman. You're welcome. You're welcome. Still <laughs> pants. He changed his pants. <laughs> he is a god. <laughs> he could. No Superman could do that. Anyway, uh, Luther's plan is BVS. No. You know what's the problem? Batman. You know who should go fight? Batman. What? 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 W A T period. What? What? You have to go fight Batman. That does because he's a problem. Why nope. would I do that? Why would I do that? Because he's making you look bad. How? He's a vigilante like you, and he's he's really rough. And Superman even says, Gotham's rough town. <laughs> and he goes, Yeah, not this rough. He still doesn't kill people though. Yeah, but he might as well. And he shows Clark all of these like pictures of what Batman's brutalized. Uh-huh. We don't see them. Oh. So then, uh... So then Batman this? shows up? What the hell kind of outfit it's is that? It's another ship. It's yeah. another ship. So then, uh, We're gonna another do another ship, boat thing? Yeah, another ship is taken over by bad guys, but Batman sneaks in, so, and he kicks the crap out of them using a gun. What is he wearing? Well, he's wearing a proto-year one outfit. This is a post-Batman year one Pre All Star Batman and Robin, maybe? Because Robin's not in it. So right. this story must take place between Year One and All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder. I guess. I yeah. guess. Except it can't, because in All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, Superman can't fly yet. Oops. What? So I guess this is after that. Right, except there's no Robin. Well, Robin stayed home. I mean, maybe he's just not here. Yeah. I'll grant you that. Robin got called into the sea by the mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, so... Anyway, so Batman... 
Batman defeats the bad guys, rescues the hostages, puts them on a boat, like a dinghy, and sends them away, then blows up the tanker. So Batman's in Does the Does Batman now. do this just because Batman needs to do this for well, the book to keep going? He's doing it to show Superman that he's like a terrorist. So then Luther goes to a secret underground subway meeting place to arrange for more evil doings with another character called the Joker. Oh no. Yep. What? So this definitely has to take place somewhere between All-Star Batman and Robin Boy Wonder and Batman Dark Knight The Last Crusade. Okay. Get, 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 your, get your pens but out. But it's Superman yeah. year one. Yeah, but it's all part of the Millerverse. Spawn Batman's part of that universe. So right. Like all so but, Batman but, significantly predates Superman. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, like, this is really supposed to be about Superman. Superman. And, in fact, the first two volumes are. Yeah, you got two whole volumes that were about but Superman. But shouldn't the payoff be, like, something Superman? that's just no. Superman? No, we gotta, we gotta, no. No, look no. at the cover. Well, that's it's a the variant Trinity. cover, but yeah. But, like. But, yes. Ugh. Like, I get Lex being here. That yeah, makes yeah, sense, right? Here, yeah, yeah. So Batman, Why not Brainiac? So, Brainiac shows up too. So, Luther and Joker like arrange for Joker to make new drugs for Luther to funnel through various schemes. Uh -huh. Like then, Joker drugs or like yeah. just drugs? No, they're Joker drugs. But like they're also... But like people want them. But people will want Are them. Are they goofballs? <laughs> <laughs> they might as well be. So, Luther leaves and then Batman shows up and basically beats Joker so savagely that he reveals where the drug labs are and then Batman blows them up and then Luther tries to strong arm the planet into re in, into printing a story about how Batman blew up like a warehouse or whatever mm -hmm. um, I love it because there's a narration here that says you've heard of big pharma this is dark pharma dark pharma it's like the dark web but of yes pharma. but of pharmacology <laughs> it's underground yeah well they're making drugs very secret so very safe. Batman blows it up, and now Luther's like, you gotta print a thing about how Batman's bad. And Batman blew up a thing, and so, you know, Super Superman catches wind of this, and so he's like, I guess I'll go face off with Batman. And you're like, wait, what? Why would he do that? And then we don't worry about it because there's no time to worry about it. So then Superman goes to Gotham. To Gotham, yeah. In the Superman book. Yes. Yeah. So Superman goes to Gotham, and he goes to the Bat-Signal, and once he arrives, Batman shows himself, and now we're seeing the first meeting of Batman and Superman. Mm -hmm. It's the, the highlight of Superman's life. It's, it's the so, day he met it's, Batman. It's so important, we're going to dedicate a large portion of the final chapter of Superman Year One right. to this. Superman gets a line in Batman Year One. One line. Barbara, Jim Gordon's wife, is giving him a, is giving him a massage, and she says... You don't have to go to Metropolis for a Man of Steel. You could use a jackhammer on your back. It's the whole Superman <laughs> reference, which also means that Superman Exists. happens during year one. Now, Batman did have a costume in that period when that line is said, so this story has to take place <laughs> between year one. This is like this is like you're like doing the scene from the Princess Bride. You're like you're like Vicini. Yeah. And this book has Iocane powder in yeah. it somewhere. Right. So Am I finished? Not remotely. <laughs> so so then Batman attacks Superman. Yeah. So like hang on. These stuff. two books focus on these women in Superman's life, and then Batman. Batman comes into no, his Lois life. Lois is the beginning. That's Lois. Yeah, but she's not banging him. Wait, wait for it. So Batman and Superman fight, or more or less, Batman attacks Superman, and he's like, I'm gonna kill you. He's just a jerk, Why does and he, he keeps saying things that he would never do. I guess because Frank's like, no, I have to prove that I, I that it's because it's from Superman's perspective. Right. Not because I know how to, right? right. Yeah. I so, guess. So Superman basically is like, Batman, knock it off. You know, Superman's getting electrodes shot into him, and finally... Batman's like, this is gonna hurt, man. So he starts punching Superman. He's breaking his knuckles. And he just he just keeps punching Superman in the face. Superman's like, stop it. He grabs Batman. He pulls him close. And then Wonder Woman shows up. And she's like, knock it how, off, you two. How many pages are left in that? So uh, literally Wonder Woman is like, stop it. We pursue justice. Let's team up. So this has to also... Uh, this also has to predate All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder because... 
Wonder Woman hasn't met Batman yet in that book. Uh, okay. Wait, in Batman and... All-Star Batman and Robin the Wonder She Wonder hasn't Wonder. met him? Wonder Woman has not met yet So then this has to come after that. Right. But it can't. But it can't. Because it takes place in between year one. Maybe they don't all go in the same universe. They straight well, up... Well, it's told well, from Superman's perspective, do. so it's like his version of things. He's yeah. like, and then she Wonder Woman shows up at that up. moment. So then Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, the Trinity, yeah. go to Lex Luthor's high rise. Uh-huh. And then they wrap him up in the lasso of truth and force him to confess <laughs> to every crime he's ever committed. It's... It's the lasso of submission in uh, this. Yes. It force, it compels you not just to tell the truth, but also to talk. Yeah, so to you can't, submit. Yeah, you have to submit. Because, of course, like, and that's Miller also being like, I used to read comics, like, back when I was a kid. Like, Wonder Woman is intrinsically connected with bondage and submission. Right, so it's like, yeah, yeah. no, like, it's about, it's about ropes and dominance. Yeah. The lasso of submission. Yeah. You know, in my universe, I never called it the lasso of truth. Right. Right. So, okay, Interesting. And at the end of Luther's confession, he also references this alien named Brainiac and how it has possession of a lost city from Krypton. They're going to pull Kandor into this? Oh, what? And Superman's like, whoa, 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 what? And Batman's like, he's got to be lying. He's like, he's not. I can tell. Like, it's the, 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 you got the lasso. Plus, I can look into his eyes. I know he's telling the truth. So now Superman is like, I've got to go on a mission to rescue this doomed city from my lost planet. And so, Superman's about to leave. Like, leave right now to go do again. that. So yeah. He's going to abandon Lois or whatever and go well, do that. He's not with Lois. He's no, not with not. Lois. But he will be with her eventually because in Batman, Dark Knight strikes again when Brainiac destroys Metropolis and kills Lois and Jimmy. Superman mourns her like he's mourning a woman that he was with. But he's with Wonder Woman. He well, eventually not ends yet. up with her. Uh, but that's later. Yeah, that's later. So... Superman is about to leave, like he's going to leave forever to go look for Kandor. And Wonder Woman stops him because she is like, this guy, I got to get this guy. Yeah. And she's like, you got to kiss me. Give me something to remember. And this is my favorite moment in the book. He grabs her face and he kisses her forehead. (laughs) And she's like, what? Batman's like, I have to fill him. Yeah. You punk. You twit. I got got this. Come here. So then Superman flies away and then leaves to look for Kandor. The end. What? This is... As he flies away, the narration from Wonder Woman is, You boy, you sweet little Adonis, go become a man. Then you come back for me. Yeah. The... He leaves his Amazon queen behind him and a big chunk of himself with her. What? He (laughs) just met her! I know. But, like, you know, we know he's going to end up with her at the end, so I guess it's love is first sight. There's no indication that he loves her. No, it's cool. She, well, I mean, there's no real indication. Him, just like the sea. Just like the sea. The reality yep. is she, she She's gave just him, that confident. She's like, he'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah. I mean, Lori was when she first yep. sees him. Yes, but, like, how many women will he have banged throughout the stars? Countless. And she doesn't care. No. As long as I get him. Yeah, as long as I end up with him. You as long as I bury his children. You know children there are everywhere? Krypton's not dead. Yeah, no, the universe is people with little cows. It's fine. He kissed me on the forehead. I'm not too worried that he's going to, like, bang other chicks. He will, though, because he did. (laughs) But I like, I like, that's like, oops, I almost wrote Superman for a second. Like, he literally is just like, yeah, we're not together. Yeah, what? Why would I kiss you? Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, but no. A little on the forehead And then he just leaves. (laughs) And then he just leaves. And then he leaves. And the last page. He does his move. The last page alludes to Brainiac and this grand battle between him and Kandor. Superman doesn't even know who the hell Brainiac is. Yeah, but you do. But there's also, like, here's the thing. Yeah, okay. He's a giant frog monster that's going to level Metropolis. So, like, this book really relies on. Your okay. understanding, sort of? your tertiary understanding. Because it's like, this book does, and then it's like, oh, I'll flip the script a little bit. And this book's like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to remind you of something that nobody remembers. Yeah. And then this book's like, uh, let's, look, you, right. you know who Superman is. He loves Krypton. He's going to save it. How? But also Wonder Woman and Batman. Though. No, but I mean, yeah. like, the, and the Wonder Krypton Woman shows thing. up and immediately stops their fight and causes them to join forces, even though they were about to kill each yeah. other. But why? Uh, why are they because sad she's Wonder in Dark Woman. Never Turns about fighting each other? But They've like, never not done that this, in this universe. This sets up this like both of these books have these father figures that set up the fact that he's going to help change the world. Yes, and then he leaves. And then he, and he goes it. away without changing. He, maybe jack the world shit. is the woman that he abandons for Wonder Woman. Like. 
Then, but like he leaves, uh, he leaves to go like after his home world, yeah. which he doesn't express very much interest in learning about. No, no, no. And, and he, in the he stops first... one fake hostage situation at Lex Tower. Yeah, he almost beats. Uh, Batman to death yep. and tells Wonder Woman tells him to stop and then he leaves yeah. for a long time to go save Presumably. Kendall. What a hero. Wow. Truly he the sure hero. changed the world. Yeah, thanks. Meanwhile, your parents are like, they thought you drowned in the ocean. Yeah. Like, and you, your did mermaid you check bride. In with them? Uh, what about Lana? We know what happens to Lana. She gets really heavy and joins like a TV station in Dark Knight Returns. Right. She also dies in Dark Knight Strikes Again during the leveling of Metropolis. <sighs> Yeah. So, you know, this is... Well, that's in Batman's version of things. Right, maybe they didn't. (laughs) From Batman's perspective, that's what happens. Everything that Superman loves gets killed. Well, from my perspective... Superman Year One is positively Millerian. In, yeah. in every respect. Yeah, it well, is. It's unfortunate because, like, the first issue, I remember being like, this is oh, pretty yeah, all right. Like, there were some moments. Nice. I, I wasn't in love with it. No, I wasn't. No. I was like, all right, on. But I was more impressed because I didn't have very high expectations for the book. And so, I was like, shocked I was by like, the restraint. Yeah, there was restraint. There was, like, something to it. There's yeah. something seemingly cohesive to it. Definitely. And maybe there was some kind of, And, like, there were moments where you're like, all right. It's literally as though this book took too long and so like he was like oh but I gotta get to the end yeah but I got to Batman why yeah it's almost like but there's no reason there should be an editor which Frank doesn't need because they don't care just let him write whatever he wants but an editor came in and said you have to put Batman in this (laughs) you have to well, but he put he didn't just put him in, he put a, a lot of him in. I know. That's really frustrating. Like, it's really important. We even have Batman's internal thoughts. So it's like, it, it couldn't just be How? Superman's perspective of Batman. We also have to know what Batman's thinking in right. the sequence. Which and, doesn't put it from Superman's perspective. Nope. Unless, no. super, unless Batman was thinking no, this so is just loud what that happened. Superman heard it. I mean, you know. But the other thing is, I could also see from Miller's perspective, he's like, he like. He, he, he likes writing. He likes telling stories. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't really care if it's following all the rules or, 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 you know, doing the things you're supposed to. He doesn't... Or he, he, narratively satisfying. Right. Well, he doesn't... He defies convention. <laughs> yeah, Frank except Miller defies convention. He does it going always. On the cover of the train. But, like, no. Well, no, that's true. And some of his works are more celebrated than others. And you would yeah. argue that's because he actually has restraint and, and, and story structure in some of them. But, like... But also, from his you know, point of view, I would argue that he's like, and why wouldn't I put Batman in there? You know what? Like, you know what you kind of want? You want Batman. You want me to do another Batman? Here's Batman. And in fact, he's doing a fourth Dark Knight Returns called Batman Dark Knight the Golden Child, which will be a new, solely Frank Miller, Batman the Dark Knight sequel. What I think is frustrating for me about having Batman in this is that, like, Black Label has been accused of being just a bat type <laughs> of... Yeah, and then you got a Superman book, and Batman's also a heavy component in the Don't third Don't forget chapter. about Batman. Right. Well, it's also like, you want to tell a story about the beginning of Superman. Right. And it ends with Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman teaming up. Like, wouldn't that be, like, the next book? Right. That'd be, that'd be year you, two. There's also such an emphasis on his family in this first chapter. Yeah. Even if they're not, like, as heavily in the others, you'd think he would be checking in. Yes. Or, like, he would have, like, moments where, like, he either thought back to their lessons or I, something. I always go back. There's a quote that he gave in an interview, probably with Wizard Magazine, when Dark Knight Strikes Again came out mm-hmm. in 2000. To 2001, where he talks about how he really wanted to play in the DC universe and he wanted to like play with all these characters. He's like, yeah, I'm doing a Dark Knight sequel, but really, I want to see like all the heroes. And he's like, I'm gonna put Superman in there, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, everybody's gonna go in there. And I want to see them do the things that I want to see them do. I don't care, there's a quote, about Barry Allen's marriage. I just want to see the Flash run fast. And from that perspective, I can't really argue. Because like, if you want to tell that kind of story, there's no reason not to. And there's no reason to stop. Right. Uh-huh. And, and no one's there to tell you you can't. But, you know, if it's at the expense of the story you're already telling, eh. And I would argue, frustratingly enough, that Strikes Again uses the Flash more properly than this uses Batman or Wonder Woman. Yeah. Matter. 
Yeah. You know what's interesting too is on like the back of this Superman symbol, back of this it's Superman. Superman and Wonder, and Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. But she's barely in it. Yeah. Where yeah. the hell's Batman? It might as well just be the Bat logo on the back. Yeah. Like Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, it's just a Batman thing. I don't know. <laughs> to me, this is a story about... All about how. <laughs> all brief. about how <laughs> Superman meets and bangs hot chicks who are all about him and then leaves them with no repercussions whatsoever. Until we get here. And they love him for it. Yes. Like, this story... I understand. This story up. doesn't have an end. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. It's like, here's two parts to a story, and then, and then a, this happens. This might have been yeah. called Superman Year Two, Chapter One. It's like, well, well, what about Chapter Three of, it's of Year fine. One? Yeah. No. Trust me, you, it got really messy. You don't want to know. <laughs> because it's not even like Superman just happened to thematically be under the ocean to save Lois at the beginning of Chapter Three. Atlanteans shoot Lois's pod. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. maybe if we're left to our own devices and we're meant to interpret the work, Superman sees that aggression against a civilian and he abandons their bullshit culture because he doesn't think it's worth protecting anymore. But he was living in it for a year and he fought Krakens and stuff, so I think he has a pretty good bead on what Atlantean culture is like and their treatment of the outside world. Like, literally, if, 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 if Laurie had fallen in love with a surface dweller who wasn't Superman, they would have been crushed to death by a golem. <laughs> You know, it just so happens that you also are indestructible. Right. It's also frustrating because Superman is great and perfect in every way. And while I do want to see a seasoned Superman, if you're going to see Superman year one, you know, if there's ever a time to watch Superman falter, it's when he first starts. But he is perfect and never breaks a sweat over anything at any point. No. And in fact, the only time he refers to his power, he says things like, I feel like I'm getting stronger every day. Right, and he doesn't make mistakes. We nope. don't reference like, you know, his like, in, like any sort of interaction with Jor-El via Kryptonian nope. technology. No. Like, yeah, which I kind of like. A... I guess I do like to some degree, but like, where where do you learn to understand any of this? Right. Why the shit do you give a like? How crap do you even about know Krypton? what Kandor is? How do you know what? Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you even know, know what Kandor is? Yep. It's like Kandor. <gasps> what? Wait, what's Kandor? Yeah. <laughs> That's what's what I should say. What's there, a Kandor? Yeah. I will say there is another Superman origin story that I really liked back in the day that deals with the fact that he never got told. So when he hears the word Krypton or Kryptonian, he doesn't know what it means. Mm, interesting. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's kind of cool. Because, yeah, when would he learn that? Yeah. Unless his space dad told him. So, yeah. It, Superman year one. Woof. That's the dust jacket quote. I honestly believe that Superman cares about everyone so much. I just can't be tied down by any one chick. That's it. Like, it's it's like, I love everyone. It's like the idea that, like, God loves you. Yeah. But he also, like, will let bad things happen to you. <laughs> that right. doesn't mean he doesn't love yeah, you. Yeah, he doesn't love anyone more than any other. Exactly. It would be, baby. It would be selfish of me to only, you know, be spread with one, my, my with one girl. girl. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta spread the love, baby. Yeah. I, I don't, there's no moment where no, he's like, "Come it's on, Lori, you gotta, really let, me, you gotta let this eagle fly, baby." That, there's no like confrontation. There's never, you know, there's no, no. like, like, no one, gee, no I one, feel bad because I haven't seen Lana. Not or, like, even I a little to bit. Her and no, it didn't go well. The just only like, addressing no. we have is this delusional. I love her with all my heart. That's what he says about Lana when he's leaving her. Now right. goodbye forever. And, like, and to be fair, that's a high school romance. They don't always right. work no. out. And like, but there's something to be said about addressing that, even if it's with a conversation mm -hmm. with his parents. Yeah. yeah. Like, how's Lana doing? Yeah. Like, and then it's and then it's like, okay, that was interesting. And then when he leaves the undersea woman, yes, Lori, Lori. Yeah. There's even less. He doesn't even say goodbye. And, that, and that's there's more stakes. Because not only is he yeah, also were, like, married or whatever, her, he's a statesman. Yeah, he's, he's the, the head king of, of that, Atlantis. It's just, it just feels like there's like some missing pages <laughs> where like he goes back and tells her like, oh, I ran into this woman who needed rescuing, and she's like, oh, you were with another woman, right? You know, and they have Even like if a you fight want to misogynistically say that it's her fault, like she kicks him out or yeah, something. Yeah, like whatever. At but least no, I can't let him look like a dork. He's got to like end things. Mm -hmm. Well, then have him or end not. things. Have him say, like, you know what? I thought this was for me, but it turns out, like, I was wrong. And I will yeah, always treasure our time understand. together. And just be like, 
Yeah, it was great being with you. I also right. that he wants to see the world, so he goes to train at the naval base, yeah. and then just goes underwater and doesn't go anywhere else. <laughs> Which is, yeah. that's more real? Like, that's like what a person do? Or like, yeah. I gotta see the world! Oh, I got action in one city! I'm gonna be here forever! Yeah. Because like, I'm never gonna go anywhere else! You didn't see like, shit! Yeah, you didn't learn jack squat. You didn't even see the ocean! The Atlantis is maybe 10 miles square feet. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you what? saw one part of the ocean. You saw one er area of the ocean where you also got like laid. That's uh, a shame. It, <laughs> yeah, it's too bad. It this is a bit is of a shame. shame. Missed opportunity. Yeah. The I would third chat, and that's why people were like, "Oh, damn it!" Like people, I remember everybody was like talking about, "Like, oh man, yeah, oh, chapter okay. one, oh chapter two, fish people, not what I would expect." Yeah, but cool. didn't see sure. that coming. But because obviously, I can't wait till I this pays off. Oop. Batman, damn it. You know, you got the people who are like, <laughs> yeah. Let's just see what she did yeah. there. Uh -huh. oh, so, so you're not going to wrap up any of the things you introduced in no. the first two books or address them in any way? Okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so there we have it. There isn't even like, he leaves and it's like, obviously there's he, probably some sort of press coverage to what's going mm. on to some degree. He, Wouldn't Ma and Pa Kent be aware of like, oh, there he goes. I love he also leaves to do something that would be interesting and could be explored in the story, maybe in substitution for fighting fish monsters. Right, or... <laughs> or Batman. Or I was gonna say, or instead, continue the the, the, the growth that you're trying to yeah. show in these first two. We don't two. go anywhere. Just, just <laughs> hey. have him deal with humanity a little bit more. Yeah. No, this is a book about how Superman leaves. Why? That's what they should call it. Superman leaves. Yeah. You know, like Superman returns. Yeah. yeah Superman, Superman does just... some things and then he leaves. That's what happens in every <laughs> book. Every yeah. book and follows that format. Yeah, Superman yeah. nopes the hell out of there. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Done. Nope. Yeah. It's like he he hangs out in a place until something better comes along and then he goes away yeah. and he goes and becomes that. Superman better deal. <laughs> <laughs> Superman, Superman the, the grass, grass is, is always crazy. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll see you guys next time with an all new episode of Back. I just want to thank you all for watching. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. So long. Bye. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> what the fuck? It's weird. You know, you could have done, I mean, like, well, it was only three chapters. Because I was going to say, what you could have done, you know, because he talks a big game in the first two chapters. He's yeah. like, I'm going. And then he goes to the ocean. And then, he, and then, like, you do a story, like a chapter where he goes home. And like mm, yes. he tries to stay there. He's like, okay, Lana, I'm back. I've learned more. You know, she's and like she's dissatisfied. He's dissatisfied. Yeah. It's too small. You can't go home again. Well, and then yeah. he and then he leaves that. And like and then he has to like if, he has to go no, to. But university. then Superman would fail. If you want, I can't to, have him fail. Yeah, no. If you want to do the fish people thing, he goes home after that and he explains to them. He's just like. They asked me to rule and I can't. I'm not ready. Right. Or yeah. like, I'll never be ready. I'm not a ruler. You're like, that's not what I'm I do. I'm not from around there. So like, he I'm goes back home to kind of reset and like cleanse the palace. Yeah. And Lana's moved on at that point because yeah. they, La Lana's they with left. Pete or something. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, you didn't you know, send me any letters. Yeah. You, well, no, you like, didn't they, call ever. But just that's get. when you can establish that they had already like they'd broken up. Like yeah. obviously it wasn't gonna yeah, work. Even if you don't yeah. need to look, make them look like And like, like he's happy for her. Yeah. He's like, oh wow, you found somebody. That's great. That's great. I guess there's really nothing for me here. Right. Time Maybe to I'll move on. go back yeah. to yeah. this. I don't Hell. know what I was looking for. Oh, like, his parents are older, and he's on the farm. He's doing all the work for them. And, you know, dad comes out, Pa, I should say, and he puts his hand on his shoulder. He's like, son, you can't stay here. Yeah. Like, this isn't your home anymore. Or like, he, what are you talking about? You got, I got, you got all these feelings. Like, son, I, I, I know. It was my farm before you got here. Yeah. Like, you don't need to do this. Or you could have it where, like, he comes back and he wants to do that, and Pa has all these workers now. Right. Yeah. And he's just like, well, what do I do? And he's like, no, they got it. Yeah. yeah. No, what your Pa's say? got it, son. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Like, you're just here because, you yeah. know, you're our yeah, family. You're, you're our son. Right. Yeah, we enjoy the, family time. Right, exactly. like, You don't have to take care of us. But it seems like you feel like you need to take care of something, and there's a whole big world out there. Yeah. yeah. We're too small for you, son. So, I know. Yeah. That'd be great. Right? Or, no. like, maybe it's called year one. Focus on a year well, or that, so. Just one year, like, yeah. How many years do we cover here? <laughs> no, there is a Superman year one. It's called Superman for All Seasons, yes. in which there's all the seasons in yeah, a year. Yeah, that's true. Yep. I know. Damn it. We already had it. That's the problem. He's like, well, I'm not going to do that. They already did that. Yeah. But I will call it the same thing. I will ape off the name so that you buy it. Big time. And then put Batman in. And here's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you stole his title, and then you put him in the last chapter. Yep. Damn it. Oh, I figured it was only fair. I took his title. You might as well get some well, screen I wrote time. It. It's mine. You can do whatever I want with it. Yep. <laughs>